Hello, my name's Ted Holden with CGG Geo Software, and I'd like to visit with you today about predicting lithophases, effective porosity, and carriageing volume in the lower Barnett Shale in a well-based feasibility study. The question we'd like to answer is really how can we separate or decouple variations in lithology, porosity, and carriage and volume in the Barnett Shale? In this cross plot of pea impedance and shear impedance through the lower Barnett Shale, we see several areas, the aronite rich area, the carbonate rich area, and the clay rich area. And we see some variation within those particular lithologies, which we can assume are due to variations in lithology, porosity, or carriage and volume. If we take a little look at how we're going to do that, we understand that we need to use some type of a rock physics model, which is illustrated here. We see that we have three different types of matrix. Our stiff matrix, our organic content, or carriage in the soft, softer matrix, and then our clays in another group. Uh, after mixing those together, we add inclusions through Custer Tosix for each uh, group of minerals, stiff matrix, soft matrix from carrageen, and soft matrix from clays. And then add fluid through fluid substitution for the saturated rock. This is a view of our rock SI display where that I set up the model and I utilize different uh, volumes of V-carrageen. Now the way I did that is I took multiples of the in-situ V-carrageen. I did it that way because of the heterogeneity in the layering in the lower Barnett shale. It just makes a lot more sense to take multiples of the in-situ carrageen value rather than a constant value for replacement. Uh, we see the three curves in, for P impedance in the first track, the three shear impedance curves, one for each case in the second track, the density for each case in the density track, and then the VPVS and the three uh, angle stacks from the synthetics from these particular cases. As you can see, it's the changes between each scenario are most pronounced in terms of the density. We also see that it's uh, somewhat apparent in terms of the synthetic stacks, but it's not a dramatic change. So it looks like density is the most sensitive indicator that we see in terms of these three elastic properties and the derivative VPBS ratio. If we look at those three carriage and volume scenarios in terms of ABO gradient and amplitude, we see that there's not significant variations. These plots appear as we suspected they would from looking at the log plot. Let's talk about some of the rock physics template settings because we're going to use a, a rock physics template in this, this interpretation. We need to talk about what the settings were. We had several constant values set, uh, nominal values for saturation, uh, clay volume, quartz volume, pyrite volume, calcite volume, and dolomite volume. Two properties were varied. A variance in the porosity from 0.01 to 0.16 and in the carriageing volume from 0 to 0 0.2. Let's look at the V carriageing variations in response to P impedance and shear impedance. If we look at the template that resulted from the model, we see that it's difficult to decouple the changes in porosity from the changes in v carriageing. They almost change in the same directions. 
So uh, this indicates that uh, using only P impedance and shear impedance uh, is not very feasible, as indicated here, to decouple uh, porosity and, and carriage and volume. Let's look at it in regard to P impedance and density. Here we see that the porosity and the V carriage and templates are moving in different directions. And consequently, we have much more sensitivity in regard to the variations in the V carriage and, and its uh, uh, decoupling from the variations in the porosity. So let's look at it with different scenarios. This is looking at the aronite rich high porosity facies, which is a preferred litho facies type. And this is the low V carrigen scenario. We can see where those points fall in the P impedance density cross plot. We would expect when we go to the in situ or mid carrigen scenario, they will have moved and we see they actually have in the direction of the increase in V-carrigen. And then finally, the high-carrigen scenario, again, moving in the direction of the increase in V-carrigen as indicated in the template. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at some observations. When using only P-impedance and shear impedance, variations in V-carrigen appear to be more difficult to decouple from variations in porosity. When using the combination of P-impedance and density, those variations of V-carrigen appear to be more decoupled from the variations in porosity. In the lower Barnett shale, the inclusion of the density property along with the usual P-impedance and shear impedance properties should provide a better estimation of carriage and volume from the seismic inversion results. The same methods that have been illustrated in this PowerPoint can also be used in other scenarios where we're studying the variations of minerals or fluids and how they affect elastic properties. Thank you.